When a team wins as many football games as Ohio State, coming from behind means just taking a little harder road to the final destination. Coming from 24 points down is another matter entirely. But on October 13, 1984, the Buckeyes found themselves in just such a position. Their response would leave a memorable and amazing mark in the pages of Buckeye history. Ohio State's 1984 battle against Illinois was one of the most exciting games ever played in the horseshoe and one of the most dramatic comebacks in the history of college football. In my opinion, the 1984 Illinois game is one of the five most exciting Ohio State victories of all time. The game starts out, and before you know it, 7 nothing, you know, 14 nothing, and then 24 nothing. We're sitting there, we even just got into the second quarter, but we're down 24 points. I just couldn't imagine being blown out in such a big game at Ohio State. It couldn't happen. Some people could walk out of the stadium and leave because they think it's over. It's not over. Booze, I mean, these people were nasty. They were booing us. We just knew that we needed to get some momentum. All the time, a guy like Keith Byers, Chris Carter, Mike Lanise, they're all saying the same thing. We're going to come back. That comeback was spearheaded by the record-setting efforts of All-American running back Keith Byers. This may be just about the most outstanding single performance uh, in all Ohio State football. Keith was a man among boys. There are guys that can lose games for you, and then there are guys that can win, win games for you. Keith was one of those guys that could win a football game for you. If I didn't start off the day thinking I was going to set a school record and run for over 200 yards, and that's just everybody just doing their individual job. The amazing comeback win propelled the Buckeyes toward a Rose Bowl season and typified the changing nature of Big Ten football. Well, Ohio State and Michigan really dominated the Big Ten throughout the 1970s. In the early 1980s, some of the other programs were starting to emerge now. Iowa was certainly with Coach Hayden Fry, and the Illinois program was coming out of nowhere. Mike White had come in as the new head coach and had recruited a lot of junior college players, particularly from the state of California, to almost build that program up overnight. The sudden infusion of West Coast talent carried the Illini to the 1983 Big Ten title but drew accusations of less than legal recruiting. I think for Coach Bruce, uh, you know, obviously when he's out on the road recruiting against these guys, you know, he's like, we got we to gotta take care of these guys. They're not doing it the right way. They're not doing it the right way. Obviously, when someone's cheating, you, you really want to beat them, don't you? And your kids have to understand that you don't, if you don't agree with the philosophy, you want to really teach them that we can do it the right way and we can still win. With off-field allegations fueling the fire, Ohio State and Illinois became immediate on-field rivals after years of Buckeye domination. Ohio State had defeated Illinois 15 games in a row until 1983. And then out at Champaign in the 1983 game, Illinois drove the length of the field in the closing seconds to win 17-13, and that broke Ohio State's 15-game winning streak. That loss was made even more bitter by the Illini's brash and abrasive style, a style that rubbed the Buckeyes in all the wrong ways. There was a great deal of antipathy between our players and their players and our coaches and probably their coaches. Everyone seemed to know that when you played Illinois, there'd be a lot more trash talking. And we were the, the, the clean-cut guys, the guys that typify the Big Ten and represented the Big Ten uh, very well. Illinois was a team that was up and coming and every little thing excited them. You never really saw that in the Big Ten. You know, I mean, there's always you respect your opponent, go out there and play hard. And, you know, here we got a team that's not only doing the talking, but, you know, they beat us. We get to 84. This is kind of a rivalry starting to build up. And so we talked all year about, hey, we got to get the Illini. We got to get the Illini. Preseason practice focused on Illinois and taking back the Big Ten title. We felt good coming into the 84 season, you know, all during training camp. The only thing we talked about was getting to that Rose Bowl. We had a tremendous amount of talent coming back. Everyone knew that Keith would step up. We had a, a veteran quarterback. We had a very seasoned offensive line. So we knew offensively we were pretty loaded. We thought defensively, you know, if we can find a few guys to step up and make some plays, we got a chance to be a pretty good team. Holsters agreed, and the Buckeyes started the season as the nation's sixth-ranked team. But after opening impressively in their first four games, including a 45-26 whipping of highly talented Iowa, the Buckeyes title express ran off the rails in West Lafayette. Purdue had to be the most frustrating game of my career. 
It was a game that we really never should have should have lost. Purdue shouldn't have been on the same field with us. We just ran out of time because it was a fourth down play that I spiked the football. And the down marker said third down. You shouldn't do that. You know, it's a mental error, and you hate to lose football games because it's a mental error. And that's basically what happened. But we didn't wallow in our loss and, you know, in our pity because we went back to our goals that we set during training camp. We said, hey, this is going to be a Rose Bowl season. We're going to win the Rose Bowl. To get to Pasadena, the Buckeyes would have to beat the reigning Big Ten champions, Illinois. Their showdown in the horseshoe was just one week away. The Ohio State Buckeyes entered their 1984 game against Illinois on the heels of a self-inflicted loss at Purdue. A second consecutive defeat would be a fatal blow to their Big Ten title hopes, which made getting back to work the first order of business. Days don't change just because you lost to Purdue and it's your first Big Ten loss. You have to get up and get into a routine. Because winning is contagious, but so is losing. It's like you got to get that out right away. On October 13th, 1984, a homecoming day crowd of over 89,000 fans packed the horseshoe with visions of a Buckeye victory. But in the game's first moments, Ohio State looked lethargic and unable to shake their Boilermaker hangover. Absolutely nothing. On their second offensive possession, the Illini took advantage. Rooks scurries all the way to the end zone. Thomas Rooks, 39-yard sprint, set up Illinois' first score a third down toss from quarterback Jack Trudeau to receiver Randy Grant. Touchdown, Randy Grant! Within minutes, the Illini were back in Buckeye territory, and a 26-yard Chris White field goal made the score 10 to nothing, Illinois. It's good. But the Buckeyes' headache was just beginning. Throwing first down, it is intercepted by Heaven. Four plays later, the Illini were in the end zone, and the score was 17-0. Touchdown! And just when it seemed like it couldn't get any worse, it did. As Byers roams the left end, drops the football, Illinois got it. It was like uh, Murphy's Law. Anything that can go wrong, will go wrong. I'm running around the left end with the ball in my hand. Next to me, the ball is on the ground. <laughs> and nobody hits me. I hit my thigh pad, and the ball just flies out my hand. On the second play of the second quarter, Trudeau hit tight end Cap Boso, giving the Illini a shocking 24-0 lead. Touchdown, Illinois, Boso. For the Buckeyes, it seemed like a bad dream come to life. And I think everybody's looking at themselves like, this is, you know, this, this can't be true. I mean, can we go back and rewind that first quarter and start over? Longtime dispatch sports writer Paul Horney said when it got to be 24 to nothing Illinois, he saw some of his fellow writers quickly whip out their press guides and start to look up what's the biggest margin of defeat for Ohio State ever in Ohio Stadium. You want to fight your own teammates, you want to fight Illinois because those guys are wolfing. We're screaming at the offense. Well, you're screaming deep down inside. That was one thing Earl never allowed us to divide each other. I never felt that we were out of the football game, even when the score was 24 to nothing, because I knew our kids could fight back at home, yeah. that we would uh, eventually uh, get going. Whether we could come all the way back, uh, who knows that. I just think everybody said, hey, let's just take this one play at a time. Let's see if we can make it happen. With just five minutes left in the half, the Buckeyes finally caught fire. Wide open, Carter. Two Tom Zach strikes to freshman Chris Carter gave the Buckeyes their first scoring opportunity. Down the sideline. Their All-American tailback carried the ball the rest of the way home. This is Byers, spinning, touchdown! Byers spinning 16-yard sprint got the Buckeyes on the board and gave the Scarlet and Gray their first feelings of hope. When he makes that run, boy, you don't think that's an inspiration to the whole football team? If there's going to be anyone that we're going to put the ball in hands or anyone that can get it done for us, it's Keith Byers. And now he's rolling. Back on the sidelines, an emotional Byers made a solemn vow to the viewers at home. We coming back. He called it. He called it, and he, he believed in it, and he felt it. I think he believed that when he said that. And I think that's important, because if you don't believe it, if you don't believe you can come back, you can't come back. 
my whole demeanor and attitude just changed. Is now I'm in a very positive frame of mind. No matter what Illinois puts up there, they're in trouble now because you know we found our stride. Yeah, we're down 24/7, but we won't stay down 24/7 long. It's a long lot of football to play. Aiding the cause was an unnecessary roughness penalty on Illinois that put safety Craig Swoop out of the game and the ensuing kickoff on the Illini 45-yard line. The Buckeyes seized on Swoop's mental miscue. Touched by Illinois. It's Ohio State football. On second down from the 30, the Buckeyes went for the big one. Tom Zach still has it. He loops it downfield for Carter. Touchdown! Chris Carter's high wire grab brought the Buckeyes and the crowd back into the ball game and announced the arrival of the highly touted freshman flanker. I point to that game in his career as the, the game when he started to become the guy. Chris doesn't think he's a freshman right now. Chris says, I'm a football player. And Chris Carter went up and made that play, and that was huge, very huge, because that was our quick score now. When we got 24-14, we're now back in the football game. And then all of a sudden you look up and you're like, hey, we might be able to pull this thing out. Hey, this is a fist fight now. We need to get at these people from sitting on their hands. You know, this is our stadium. It's our homecoming. This is our turf. If the crowd feels the football team's getting momentum and they're getting momentum, Look out. That's the way it's been at Ohio State forever and ever. The momentum took an even sharper turn when after two first downs, Sonny Gordon short-circuited the Illini drive with his diving pick of a Jack Trudeau pass. Intercepted, Sonny Gordon. The Buckeyes immediately went to work, and a quick hitter by Byers was followed by yet another Tom Zach to Carter connection. Carter, Carter is really showing his stuff this afternoon. Two quick completions took the ball to the Illini five. And with time winding down, Byers went airborne to finish the drive. Keith Byers scored with just 23 seconds to go in the second quarter. And all of a sudden at halftime, it's 24 Illinois, 21 Ohio State. We got the momentum. All the bad things that happened to us are out the window. Now this is a 30 minute football game. And my words that I said in the first half is we're coming back, they're true now. <laughs> There's no longer lip service. We are coming back. We we're back. Now let's maintain. The first half of Ohio State's 1984 battle against Illinois was a tale of two quarters that saw both the best and worst of times for the Buckeyes. After falling behind 24-0 in the game's first 16 minutes, Ohio State bounced back to close within three by the end of the first half. Touchdown. And though the Illini were slated to start with a ball, it didn't take long for the Buckeyes to seize the second half's early momentum. Fumble. Who's got it? Who's got it? Ohio State football. William White's recovery of a Ray Wilson fumble put the Buckeyes in immediate scoring position and allowed the offense to get back to doing what they did best, running the football. Illinois, nine yard line. When you're down 24 nothing, you got about this much in your playbook because the only thing you can do is throw the ball. You can't run the ball when you're down 24 points. That deficit was officially erased when on his fourth straight carry, Keith Byers went over the top of the Illini line. Byers, he's got it. Just, figured, just give it to Keith, give it to Keith, you know. This is when we're going Take some identity, you know, some hard-nosed football, and establish the line of scrimmage all over again. An Illinois field goal on the ensuing drive brought the Illini back to within one, 28 to 27. But on Ohio State's next possession, the offense went back to Byers, who delivered a piece of Buckeye history. Look at him go! And he simply runs out of his shoe. He's running so fast. To see him cut back and you know make the moves, you're like, wow, wow, this is great, you know, this is wonderful. Like, wow, the guy lost his shoe and he's still you know running away from everybody. He put a burst of speed on. Actually, he did run out of his shoe. I made the cut to the right, and as I was going down the sideline, for some reason my shoes just got loose once the, the shoe came off. I remember Earl Bruce talking about you know you got to turn the high test on when you get it, get in the open meeting, run as fast as you possibly can. And that's what I was able to do, because I didn't want nobody to step on my foot, because nobody ever would run me down from behind. Those Illinois defensive backs, they found that out. 
once up 24 points. The Illini now found themselves trailing by eight, but the reigning Big Ten champs would not concede their crown without a fight. A 10-play Illini drive culminated with a nine-yard touchdown toss from Jack Trudeau to Ray Wilson. And when Trudeau scrambled around right in for a two-point conversion, the game was suddenly back to even up. It's a tie game at 35, 35 all. On a day that saw over 1,000 yards of combined total offense, both defenses appeared outgunned by the overwhelming display of offensive fireworks. And as the game headed into the final quarter of play, the battle began to look like a war of attrition. They were capable of putting a lot of points on the board, and we couldn't stop their rage just like they couldn't stop our guys. Yet when it mattered most, both defenses managed to make critical late-game stops. An Illini blitz killed a promising Ohio State drive and forced a 47-yard Mike Spangler field goal. He's got enough leg. It's good. For the Buckeyes, their final defensive stand came at the last possible moment. Brooks. We just couldn't allow them to get across the end zone line again. And we knew that, that was our goal. It was it still was points, but from a strategic point of view, it was a big win for us. That was huge. I thought that Mike White would go for it on fourth down instead of kicking the field goal to tie. But nevertheless, I was glad they went for the tie because that gave our offense one more crack at it. And it is good. With just three minutes and 18 seconds left on the clock, the Buckeyes began their final assault with what seemed like a typical late game strategy, much to the chagrin of the Ohio State line. First play, they come out with a pass. Offensive linemen are pissed, they're upset. And the coaches saw the look on their faces on their complete passes, so he put it back in a, you know, we're gonna win the football game, we're gonna win it with those guys up front. The coaches gave in, and the Buckeyes began to pound the ball into the heart of the Illinois defense. That last drive, though, was something I'll never forget. Um, because I think we ran the same play about seven, eight times in a row. There were no secrets out there. We just planted that seed that at some point in time we got to control the clock and pound him. Keith Byers was running behind one heck of an offensive line, boy. They were blocking then. If you watch that film, they were knocking them back. We knew that we could push them around at the end of the game. There was no way in the world they could stop Keith. And, and there was no question that, that we, we wanted it more than they did. Nine straight runs by Byers and backup John Woolridge carried the Buckeyes inside the Illini 10. And on third down and goal, Byers delivered the knockout blow. The score gave Byers his record tying fifth touchdown and a then record total of 274 rushing yards. He Byers, I don't know what I've seen as great a back as this. But while records are broken, memories endure. And for the players, coaches, and fans who stood witness, Ohio State's incredible comeback win over Illinois will be a memory that never fades. Byer's performance against Illinois may be just about the most outstanding single performance in all Ohio State football. He was a great, great running back, and he was doing everything that day that you could possibly do. I mean, I saw him kind of bleeding from the mouth and nose, and, and he just didn't give up. The heart, the courage that, that he put out on the football field that afternoon, it's just, it, it, that was Keith Byers. That's one I'll never forget. I remember, you know, every play, every hit, you know, every touchdown, you know, from that game. And, you know, it, it's definitely one of the special ones for me. The way Keith ran, the way our offensive line blocked, uh, the way our defense made some plays for us. Uh, just an incredible day. Everyone that touched that field with Ohio State Buckeye jersey on gave it their all, and, and we came out on top. The Buckeyes' incredible 24-point comeback win over Illinois was the largest comeback in Ohio State football history. But not for long, just five seasons later, John Cooper's Buckeyes found themselves buried in a 31-0 hole against Minnesota. But the Buckeyes turned the tables and outscored the Gophers 41-6 the rest of the way for a miraculous 41-37 win. Both games further proved Yogi Berra's famous maxim, it ain't over till it's over. For Buckeye Classics, I'm Archie Griffin. Thanks for watching.